Scotland have just beaten Spain for the first time in 40 years, but according to Rodri, it was because they played rubbish football. Thankfully though, you've got me here to tell you that no, it wasn't because of that at all, and I'm so overjoyed by the result, I don't even care if this top clashes with the blue screen that's behind me. Basically, Scotland won that game because they had two absolutely genius tactical ideas, and they both yielded a goal. The team sheets and even the broadcast had this sort of weird 5-3-1-1 thing going on, but what was different about it wasn't the back line, they were genuinely a five like that for long parts of the match. It was this sort of middle bit here. Instead of McGregor, McTominay and McGinn in the middle with Christie just off Dyke, what you actually had was Christie and McGinn both sort of floating around the centre forward with McGregor and McTominay sitting as a two. So you had this 5-2-3 system, which is weird, but it allowed them to do one thing very well. This is Pedro Porro here. And Scotland had basically identified him as not the weak link in the team, but the person who was going to give them an opportunity to get at Spain on the attack. On the admittedly quite rare occasions where Spain were able to pin Scotland back into their own half, you always saw Porro as high up as he could possibly be, pinning Robertson pretty much into the back line. Which meant if they did get the ball back in that sort of area, Andy Robertson was going to be able to go wee all the way down that side of the pitch. And indeed, that's where the first goal came from. It's not a counter-attack like this. It came from a good bit of possession, but you can see Robertson up the field here, pointing into the space behind Porro. He wants the ball played in there so he can get in behind. But it's what follows this, which is the really clever part about Scotland's system last night and how they actually beat Spain. Now, the ball's not actually a good one and Porro cuts it out, but the genius thing Scotland did was that instead of recognising that they'd lost the ball and then starting to sit off and get back into their defensive shape, they prioritised pressing Spain in their their own third as where they were going to get the most joy. You can see here, instead of starting to drop off and give them space and get reset, the Scottish players continue to go forward as if Robertson has won that ball. This in turn cuts down on the number of options he has and in a panic, he slips over, gifting the ball back to Robertson. And their reward for this is instead of Robertson cutting the ball back to see a load of his teammates gently trotting back to the halfway line, there's a player on the six yard box, there's a player near the penalty spot and Scott McTominay, who scores the goal, arriving into the area. And that was the key to Scott Scotland's whole approach last night. They were quite happy to sit deep and let Spain have the ball in this area, but they weren't really bothered about winning it back in the middle of the pitch. Instead, what they wanted to do was when they found themselves up the other end, they wanted to put the pressure on Spain in their own defensive third to try and make mistakes and to try and win it back high up. So instead of trying to win the ball back in the middle of the pitch and out past Spain, which they knew they realistically probably couldn't do, they instead focused on winning the ball back in areas of the pitch where it only takes one or two passes to get a goal or to get a really good chance. And look, here they are again. Spain want to play out from the back. Scotland close down a lot of their pressing angles. And as soon as it gets to the fullback, they trigger the press, they get in their face, they trap them in the corner. The poor lad's got no option but to roll it back to the defender who then knocks a 40 or 50 yard ball up the pitch and Scotland win a free kick. And even when Rodri would drop into the defence to try and help out, they would just swarm him as well. Here he is getting pressured into an almost blind 40 yard pass into the middle of the pitch, which lo and behold, Scotland immediately turn over. And basking in the chaos of this, very nearly score a second goal. The really clever part about this is the only answer Spain seemed to have to getting out of these situations was to push the fullbacks as far up as possible, then hit long balls into them. Which, just to circle back to Scotland's entire original plan for getting on the ball, left all this space in behind for them to counter-attack into, and lo and behold, where does the second goal come from? Spain even subbed off Pedro Porro at half-time for Danny Carvajal, recognising that this is what Scotland were trying to make happen, and still, Scotland made it happen. The attacking shape from Spain here is just all over the place, but regardless, that's Danny Carvajal pushing really high up the pitch to try and support the attackers and oh no the ball is loose this time it's Tierney instead of Robertson who gets it but he's still able to break into the yawning chasm that is the gap behind the fullback Carvajal's no slouch of course and does catch him up but instead of showing him down the touchline as any normal defender would do tries to put him into the first row of the stands and whoops see you later Tierney arrives in almost an identical position to Robertson for the first goal cuts the ball back into the box and after a little bouncing around there's Scott McTominay again to leather it in for 2-0 so you see it wasn't rubbish football was it Rodri Scotland just put so much pressure on your right fullback that that entire side of the pitch collapsed for you twice and also while we're on the subject rubbish football so defending deep gamesmanship time wasting getting right in your opponent's faces that kind of thing Rodri used to play for Atletico Madrid literally the Harlem Globetrotters of footballing shithousery so yes that is how Scotland beat Spain for the first time in 40 years and if you actually watched it it could have been by considerably more than two goals which 
Woohoo! That would have been something. Got a little bit of a challenge for you now, though. Take the link to this video and send it to either a Scottish person or a Spanish person, and then either congratulate or laugh as you feel appropriate. And if you don't know any Scottish people or any Spanish people, then just share it anyway, because these aren't cheap. Anyway, get me on Twitter at Adam Cleary, C L E R Y 442 across the entire social spectrum at 442, and pick up the latest issue of the magazine. Ooh, special subscriber copy in all good news agents and the crap ones too. In the meantime, though, thanks for joining us. I've been Adam Cleary. Adios.